Hello everybody, E here. Welcome back to From the Desk. Today we're talking about how to write believable dialogue. I think it's one of the, I'd say it's in the top five of complaints I see from uh, readers and reviewers when I talk to them or when I interact with them or uh, whenever I read reviews, especially of indies, um, because you just can't get to a certain point in publishing if you have unbelievable dialogue. Um, unbelievable dialogue will kill a great story. Um, wooden characters is another one, well, cardboard characters or uh, characters that have no development uh, is another killer, but today we're talking about dialogue. So, how do you write believable dialogue? First, I'm going to start off telling you how I do it, and then I'm going to go over a couple of tips to make your dialogue either faster or better overall. How I write my dialogue is I literally talk to myself. I will sit there and I will do voices. Um, even if you can't do voices, you want to sit there and you want to, however you hear it in your head, um, you are going to want to try and recreate that speaking. Now, if you're only writing the dialogue to suit a purpose, if that's the only purpose and you need to get out informa information, just exposition dialogue, um, you're going to have a bad time. Um, you want to get there naturally. And if, you, if you're ever reading your dialogue and you start stumbling, um, that's the time when you need to go back and see what words you can cut out, um, how you can cut things off. Uh, another good thing is people don't speak in complete sentences. I know that I know that annoys some readers, but people are always being cut off. People are always stammering. Um, but again, you have to find a cadence to the dialogue so that it moves swiftly and propels, propels, sorry, not prepares, propels the reader forward. Now, speaking of propelling the reader forward, um, unless you're writing a, well, unless you're writing a script, uh, never have a scene that's just people talking for no reason. You you have to have something that moves along, the, and I'm talking genre writer writing and even uh, literary writing. Something that moves the story forward or gets to the point. Um, there are a lot, uh, if you're going to write for entertainment value, um, if you are, I mean, what, what else are you writing for if not for entertainment? Um, if you're writing textbooks, you don't really have to worry about dialogue, now do you? Anywho, um, I think the but the best way for you to get realistic dialogue, uh, well, n another good way, not the best, but another good way to get realistic dialogue is to go out and people watch. You can go out to Starbucks or go out to Walmart or go out to wherever you want to. Walmart's a great place because it's just a, it's a melting pool of people. Um, you get all walks of life from people. Uh, from middle class to low class to no class, um, you get everybody. Of course, you don't get you know celebrities and rich people. But um, so if if you want to make your dialogue more believable, go people watch. Go pay attention to how people talk. Um, the only thing that I would suggest you don't do is overusing realistic stammering. Or okay, my point is. When people talk, especially me, um, if you pay attention to how I use um a lot, and if you do that in your story, if you do that in your dialogue, it's going to get repetitive, it's going to get old. You can use it every now and again, um, especially when people are either shocked or upset, um, but those are ways that you can get rid of adverbs in your dialogue tags. Uh, one thing I don't suggest is adverbs in your dialogue tags. Um, you you run you run the risk of sounding maudlin or purple. Like he grinned mischievously. I think I've read that sentence at umpteen million times. Uh, but the main point of dialogue, what takes people out is when the dialogue doesn't feel real. And if it's not something that someone would say, then get rid of it. Um, even if it sounds good. Because if you if you have a, let's say you have a hillbilly who speaks in a hillbilly vernacular, and all of a sudden they're they're speaking you know if they're speaking properly proper English or however you want to put it, and they're not using their vernacular just so you can get a point across, that's what breaks. That's not realistic. That's not uh, true to the character. So I have a couple notes here 
things that uh, people, let's see here, um, there's a, there's a debate on varying speech tags, I don't, I don't do it, I don't like to do it, I use one speech tag, um, or no speech tag at all, and that's said, um, uh, sometimes maybe I'll do a hiss, like if I'm trying to get across, you know, something well sinister. Let's let's be honest. That's why you hiss or somebody whispers, stage whispers, something like that. But nine times out of ten, I'm going with said, um, and I'm going to use said as much as I have to. What I mean by have to is when you get a back and forth with two characters, or if you have more than two characters, and one of those characters, that let's say you have three to four, and those other characters speak differently let's say they use vernacular or they're smarter or they're dumber or whatever it may be when you get to those people if you write it properly you don't need a speech you don't need a dialogue tag at all you just you don't even have to put you know he said or she said or any of that stuff just pop it in there but once you get people and dean this is one of the things that dean coons gets does really well is he gets you into a flow of a conversation with he said she said or he said whatever and then all of a sudden the dialogue tags are just completely gone and you have two pages of just dialogue and that's it's one of the things that makes his books and Richard Lehman's books so easy to read once you get the reader into it once you get the reader into a dance with you they will follow you along there are going to be people who get confused. I mean, but then again, you also have writers who don't even use quotation marks, like Cormac McCarthy. Um, so you, you, but you have to trust your reader um, to an extent. You do have to provide them with enough information to let them know. So the best way is to fix your dialogue. The best way to fix dialogue is after you come back to the work. Um, like I've told you in other episodes, I always have one that. It's marinating, one I'm writing, and one that I am editing. So, and the purpose of that is, when I come back, and I'm reading the dialogue that I wrote, and I'm like, uh, well, who the hell is talking? Okay, well, let me throw a dialogue tag in there. Um, but that's, that's, that's my process. Um, those are the things to do. Okay, here's a, actually, before I end this, there's, uh, should you or should you not use quotation marks? I'm going to go ahead and throw this out. Yes, always use quotation marks. The people who do not use quotation marks, they have a certain talent for that kind of thing. Um, it takes a certain type of talent. That, good dialogue takes a certain type of talent, period. Because if you if you don't have the empathy and you don't have the absorption of you know how to tell the differences in speech, um, then you're going to have issues just writing it. Another thing that I j just popped into my head is I have a history in theater. So I did a lot of acting in high school and even after high school. I did a lot of um, local plays and things like that. So I... I would suggest maybe even going and taking either a course or signing up to try out for theater, maybe get into theater, get something in there, maybe talk to somebody in theater, maybe read a few uh, scripts or whatever, um, or take an online course, whatever. Um, so that's that would be another way, um, and that's how that's how I do it. I act out all my scenes. Um, when I'm first, that's the first draft. Um, I don't act out after that. Because once I get the rough draft done, that goes away. I've told myself the story. Then when I come back to it, that's when I make sure... That's one of the first things that I look for is believable dialogue. Anyways, I think I've gone on long enough. Now, if you were still here <laughs> and you sat through all that rambling, uh, today is going to be a little bit different. Once this goes live, it should go live about 5 a.m. Sunday morning, uh, 4, 8 Four nine. Hang on, let me check. I don't have my days right. Um, let's see here. It'll go live Sunday, uh, April eighth, twenty eighteen, and when that goes live, I will be here afterward, um, live, doing a live stream to answer any questions. I'm answer any th questions you guys have about this topic. I do hangouts with people with. You know, live streams now, I do hangouts, we just sit around and chat. This is not going to be that, so don't please don't pop in and go, hey, what do you think about this Stephen King, that Stephen King, or other? I'm going to politely usher you on. Anywho, so if you have any questions and you're not going to make the live stream, please leave them down in the doobly-doo, and I will get to you uh, 
as soon as I can. So until next time, I have been E, you have been you, this has been From the Desk, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye bye